This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. More on that later. Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and in this video I am going to go through every single Warhammer based video game ever released in chronological order. There are quite a few so sit back, relax and get ready for the ride. There have been a lot of Warhammer or Games Workshop games produced over the years, and I mean a lot. I recently did the same video for every tabletop game ever made except licensed products and board games, so I thought I'd follow it up with the computer game. I'm going to attempt to keep this as brief as possible, as there really is a lot to get through. But some of these deserve a little more time than others, as they were instrumental in bringing the Warhammer world into the more mainstream gaming market. I'm looking at you, Dawn of War and Totem. I've decided not to include the mobile games because I feel they vary hugely in quality and are more recent, so haven't had much of an effect on the Warhammer gaming industry in general. A few notable good ones though are Mordheim Warband Skirmish, although I think this is just Cease now, Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade, because it was kind of fun running around as an Imperial Knight for a bit and the iOS adaptation of the 2016 Space Hulk game, which was genuinely brilliant and I would highly recommend. As we go through these games, I'm going to show you some gameplay or cool intros and soundtracks. Some bits we're going to watch, some bits I'm going to narrate and some bits will speak for themselves. For some of you, I'm sure this will be a total nostalgia trip, whilst for others, those of you that maybe didn't play the games the first time around, hopefully you'll find this informative and interesting. You can find a lot of these games on emulators now for free online, so do go and check them out if it's something that you find interesting because it's cool to play games we never heard of before and this really is quite the, the Warhammer history when it comes to video games. It is March of 1983 and if you are lucky enough you have a ZX Spectrum and you are playing Apocalypse, the game of nuclear devastation by Games Workshop developed by Redshift. Based on the board game by Games Workshop, I don't have a huge amount of shots to show you. This game is pretty old, Players had a few different things they could do, a couple of extra ways to attack, and the players could also use ships in addition to armies and missiles. 1984 brought us Battle Cars, a vehicular combat game released for the ZX Spectrum. Battle Cars was based on the war game by Games Workshop, which was based on Mad Max. Up to two players could battle each other or the computer with vehicles that had an assortment of armor, weapons, and other components, including missiles, mines, and machine guns. Games Workshop then got pretty busy producing a whole ton of games called D-Day, Tower of Despair, Chaos and Journey's End all available on the ZX Spectrum. Eventually in 1985, at the end of it we got Talisman, the role playing game based on the very same tabletop game. Players would take it in turns to play around the board, eventually reaching the crown of command in the center and winning the game. This leads us to 1991 and things have moved on somewhat. We now have MS-DOS or DOS, an Amiga, an Amstrad, an Atari, a Commodore 64 and of course the old faithful ZX Spectrum. 1991, published by Gremlin Interactive, developed by 221 Software Development, was an adaptation of the 1990 very successful Milton Bradley HeroQuest. Just one year later, 1992, Space Crusade was born. Based on the tabletop board game, a game by Milton Bradley and Games Workshop, this was the first video game set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It was a pretty faithful conversion of the original board game with a digital board that could be viewed from both 2D and an isometric view. 1993 brought Space Hulk developed by EA with support from GW. It also had a killer soundtrack with Brian May from Queen doing some of the guitar work. We are the mailed bit of the Emperor. Your squad has been carefully selected. New technology allowed EA to do different things. This was not a direct copy of the board game. 1994 brought Hero Quest 2 Legacy of Sorosil. This was an isometric role-playing game released on the Amiga and the CD32 by Gremlin Interactive. The game was very much like its predecessor with nicer graphics and a few more characters to choose from. Blood Bowl is the turn-based strategy game adapted from the Games Workshop miniature game originally developed for MS-DOS by Destiny Software Productions and published by MicroLeague. A near straight copy of the game, this hasn't really changed a lot over the years, you will see a lot more Blood Bowl games, but it works perfectly as a video game and actually was pretty good. 
Technology then jumped on again, and by 1995, we had Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels. It was a video game published by EA, which was later ported to the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and Microsoft Windows. Based on the board game, it was a sequel to the 1993 version you'd already seen, and like its predecessor, it combined first-person shooter gameplay with real-time tactic elements. For me, this is the start of the true golden age of the 90s Warhammer games. We are going to get hit after hit. Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat was released by Mindscape Games in November 1995 for Windows and the following year on the PlayStation. The game takes place in the Warhammer fantasy world and players focus on managing a group of mercenaries who become involved in stopping a plot by the evil Skaven. It actually won runner-up for Strategy Game of the Year, only losing to Command & Conquer. 1997, we got Final Liberation released on Microsoft Windows. Technology had moved on and we started to get cutscenes like this. Okay, Yui, let's see where you was going. Oh, Yui's die. We go to this place. We make good fight. It's a war. Perhaps not the prettiest of games, it was a pretty good representation of Epic 40k which was around at the time. It did actually get runner up for best cinematics award and had a killer soundtrack. Another banger, I told you they were coming, this is a personal favourite of mine released in 1998. Chaos Gate is a video game set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. You take on command of a couple of squads of ultramarines as you do battle with the evil word bearers. Good, it's nice to know something's never changed. The Traitor Marines, Chaos Demons and their evil commander, Chaos Lord Zimran, fight against you as you level up in a kind of RPG, top-down tactical based game. Warhammer Dark Omen was released in 1998 for the PlayStation and Microsoft Windows. It was a straight sequel to Shadow of the Horned Rat set a few years later on in the game. EA took the helm in this one, although it was still developed by Mindscape and Games Workshop. Better technology meant we could start incorporating line of sight, which was quite an advancement at the time. Warhammer 40,000 Rights of War was developed by Dreamforge and released in 1999. A turn-based strategy game, you take control of the Eldar and Imperial efforts to defeat an invasion of the Tyranid Hyphen. As we say goodbye to the 90s, we slide into the 2000s and the invention of the PS2. With this comes the first game, Tau Fire Warrior, released in 2003. A first-person shooter developed by THQ, this story takes place over a period of 24 hours and gives us an insight into Tau life. It was generally well received by both players and 40k fans. Bursting onto the scene in 2004 was Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. Developed by Relic Entertainment and published by THQ, this was a real-time strategy game like no other. You could play Space Marines, Eldar, Kale Space Marines and the Orcs in both single player and multiplayer modes. I'm going to cover the expansions here because it had Winter Assault in 2005, Dark Crusade in 2006 and finally Soulstorm in 2008. These expansions brought with them new factions. You could play the Imperial Guard, Tau, Necron, Sisters of Battle and Dark Eldar. It was highly rated by critics and players and had cool one-liners like this. Cleanse. Purge. Kill. Warhammer Battle for Atluna was a PSP game released in 2006, an almost direct port of the Warcry collectible card game going around at the time, there wasn't a lot to phone home about. Released in 2006 for the N-Gage, Nokia's weird handheld mobile thing, this was actually the last game released for the console in North America. Glory and Death was a turn-based strategy game with no real new mechanics. Released for Windows in 2006, Warhammer Mark of Chaos was a real-time tactics game set in the Warhammer universe. According to the developers, it was a game focusing on the armies and battles while de-emphasizing the tedious aspects of base and resource management. It had a follow-up game called Battle March, released in 2008 for both Windows and the Xbox 360. The game was received with mixed and extremely varying reviews, but overall, it was pretty good. Squad Command was published by THQ and released for the PSP and DS in November of 2007. 
With both single player and multiplayer options, the game featured the Ultramarines over a course of 15 missions as they fend off an incursion by, you guessed it, the word bearers. Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning was an MMORPG based on the Warhammer Fantasy setting developed by Mythic Entertainment and published by EA in 2008. The game ended up selling over a million copies and peaking at 800,000 paid subscribers. It was officially shut down in 2013 but a private server called Return of Reckoning has been run by fans and is running even now. We all love gaming, that's why we are here and RPGs are an intrinsic part of our hobby. Well, this is where I transition into our video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. A tactical turn-based MMO battle game with a strong emphasis on hero collection and development, Raid is great fun and completely free to play. With over 650 unique champions to collect from different factions with billions of ways to customize them, Raid offers incredible depth and caters for however you want to play the game. Personally, I like the option to be able to build and play my party any way I like. For me, that's the classic mix of damage dealer, healer, archer, and tank. The tactical combat system lets me utilize my party strengths whilst taking advantage of my opponent's weaknesses. Use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to download the game and receive in-game bonuses and the champion Tayrell. If you like the sound of that, MMA and pro wrestling fans will also recognize this amazing new legendary champion available in-game now, it's Ronda Rousey. Not only does Ronda look strong, she's a real threat on the battlefield too. You can get this champion for free by playing Raid for 7 days between now and February the 20th. This game is available on both Android and iOS, so make sure to click on the link below or scan the QR code on screen right now to get all of those juicy bonuses. Right, let's get back to the video. Blood Bowl is back. It's 2009 and this game developed by Cyanide was another adaptation of the board game of the same name. It was released for Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, PSP, iOS, and Android. In 2009, Cyanide announced a free expansion containing the Dark Elves, and in April 2010, they did an updated version called the Legendary Edition, bringing in 11 new teams. Dawn of War 2 was released in 2009, published by THQ, and developed by Relic Entertainment. The gameplay and experience of Dawn of War 2 is markedly different from that of Dawn of War and its expansions. Building bases is completely removed and the game's lead designer describes the feel of the game by saying that it takes everything that was great about the original and combines it with the best of that company of heroes had to offer. Two expansions were released over the next two years, Chaos Rising and Retribution, adding more features into the game. Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team is a top-down shooter game released on the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2011. It was later ported over to Microsoft Windows in 2014 and was published and developed by THQ Studios. You play as Space Marines attempting to halt an orc invasion on a spaceship. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine is a third-person hack-and-slash shooter game. Is that wise, Captain? The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Try to keep up. Developed by Relic Entertainment and published by THQ, it was released for Windows, the PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2011. The game takes place on the Forge world Greyer, where you play the main character, Captain Titus, voiced by Mark Strong, and his subordinate veteran Sergeant Sidon. It was recently announced that we will be getting a follow-up Space Marine 2 sometime soon. I bet you were worried we wouldn't see more Space Hulk. Well, fear not, we're going to see a lot more of it. Released in 2013 for Windows and Mac, it then followed up with iOS, Linux, the PS3, PS Vita, and the Wii U and the PS4 over the next couple of years. A straight copy of the 4th edition, nothing new to report. Other than that, Gene Steeler is really, really, really dead. And look! More Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl 2, released in 2015 by Cyanide and published by Focus Home Interactive, was a sequel to the 2009 video game. Still popular now with a good player base, a seriously good game, and in all of my years of playing Warhammer in any form, this game got me into Blood Bowl, and I can highly recommend it, so do go out there and grab it on Steam. Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon was released in 2014, developed by Slithering Games and released by the Lord Games Studio and Flashback Games. 
it was another turn-based strategy, very much like the old game Final Liberation. To be honest, it plays almost identically, and I have to say, for a game made 20 years later, the graphics haven't improved that much. I told you you'd be getting more Space Hulk, and don't worry, this isn't the last one either. Released in 2014 by Full Control, another turn-based tactics game, pretty much the same as all of the previous ones, except in this one you get a few new chapters you can play, and you can level up your Terminators. The first interpretation of Mordheim City of the Damned was released in 2015 by Focus Home Interactive and Rogue Factor. A turn-based tactics game released for Windows, the PS4, the Xbox One was based on the 1999 tabletop skirmish game. You lead your warband through various PvE or PvP missions and level up as you go. It wasn't a direct copy, it didn't have the same stats, but it did very much have that Mordheim feel. I recommend this one personally. Warhammer 40,000 Death Watch Tyranid Invasion was released in 2015, produced and developed by Rodeo Games. A top-down turn-based strategy, much like we've seen before, released for Microsoft Windows, the PS4 and the iOS. You have action points, blah blah blah, you've heard it all before. Kill some Tyranids. Warhammer The End Times Vermintide was released in 2015 as a cooperative survival video game developed and published by Fatshark. That is what they taught. No one spoke of the ancient enemy now rising from beneath, and no one will be left to tell the tale. Unless you can stem the Vermintide. A co-op focused first person shooter game set in the Warhammer universe you can choose from five different heroes, a witch hunter, an empire soldier, a dwarf ranger, a wood elf way watcher, and a bright wizard. Battlefleet Gothic Armada is a real-time strategy video game developed by Tindalos Interactive and published by Focused Home Interactive. The first computer game adaptation of the 1999 classic Battlefleet Gothic board game, you can take control of one of six factions, the Imperial Fleet, Chaos, Orcs, Eldar, Space Marines, and the Tau. We're here, it's the big one, Total War Warhammer. Released in 2016 as a turn-based strategy and real-time tactics video game, developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega for Windows. It was the first Total War game not to portray a historical setting, and it was the 10th title in the Total War series. With both single and multiplayer game modes, this game has had so much additional downloadable content, I can't even go through it all in this video. Man O' War Corsair was released by Evil Twin Artworks in 2016. A naval combat action slash exploration game released for Linux, Macs and Windows was based on the Games Workshop's 1993 tabletop. Space Hulk Deathing was released in December 2016, with the console version released in March 2018. The story was co-written by Gav Thorpe, a longtime Games Workshop author and games designer. The designers expanded the gameplay environment beyond the narrow maze-like corridors of the original game and earlier video games to include massive open spaces such as a cathedral. Total War Warhammer 2 was released in September of 2017. Creative Assembly have released several paid and free DLC packs for the game which expand its content. Mortal Empires, a massive combined campaign for players who own both Total War and Total War 2 was released in October 2017. Sanctus Reach was released by Slytherin and produced by Straylight Entertainment in 2017. A turn-based strategy game for Windows was based on the 2014 Warhammer 40,000 campaign books, The Red War and The Hour of the Wolf. After nearly six years, Sega and Relic Entertainment brought us Dawn of War 3, another real-time strategy game for Windows and Linux, and that is where it belongs. They somehow took all of the best bits from Dawn of War 1 and Dawn of War 2 and put them in the bin. Redacted. Blood Bowl Death Zone was released by Cyanide in 2018. A real-time tactics game as opposed to a turn-based one. I wasn't really going to mention it, but I said I'd do every game, so there it is. 
Space Hulk Tactics, released in 2018 by Focus Home and Cyanide Studios, was yet again another turn-based tactics deck-building game. I actually couldn't remember which game was which. I couldn't tell the difference between all these ones. So, so yeah, have some more Space Hulk. Gladius Relics of War was developed by Slytherin and published by Proxy Studios. It was a 4x turn-based strategy game, meaning it looked a bit like Final Liberation, but has some close-up views as well. Out on Windows and Linux, it wasn't a bad game. It just wasn't a great game. If you enjoyed Final Liberation and Civilization, you probably would enjoy this one too. Inquisitor Martyr is an action role-playing video game developed and published by Necrol Games for Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and in 2022, it was added to PS5 and the Xbox Series XS. The game can be played both solo and in co-op and is often compared to Diablo. Mechanicus was released in 2018 by Casido Games and published by Bulwark Studios. A turn-based top-down tactics game for Windows, Mac, Linux, Switch, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. This was based on Games Workshop's physical 2018 Warhammer 40,000 expansion, Forgebane. One of the first Age of Sigmar games we had was Champions in 2018, published and developed by PlayFusion. It was a collectible card game for Windows, Android, iOS, the Switch, and it allowed cards to be scanned into a digital game from the tabletop iOS Champions card game. Vermintide 2 was released in 2018 for the Windows, PS4, Xbox One, and the Xbox Series XL. Following the events of the first game, the Gracia Rasknit has successfully captured the five heroes of Ubersright. With tons of additional DLC, the game was hugely popular and by the end of 29, it had sold over 2 million copies. Three years after the first one, we were given Battlefleet Gothic Armad 2. At launch, it included all 12 factions from the original tabletop game. With improved multiplayer modes, bigger battles, refined gameplay and more customization, it was a much better experience. One year after the first game, Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Prophecy was a standalone expansion for Inquisitor Martyr. Same game, same rules, same plan, new stuff. Warhammer Chaos Bane is an action role-playing game developed by Eco Software and published by Big Ben Interactive. It was released for Windows, PS4, Xbox One on May the 31st, 2019. Players get to choose to play one of six character classes from the Warhammer Fantasy setting and the character must help save the Empire against the Demons of Chaos. Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command was made by Green Man Gaming and distributed by Binary Planet. A turn-based strategy game for Windows, PS4 and the Xbox One, this was based on Games Workshop's tabletop game, Aeronautica Imperialis. Players had the option to take to the skies as the heroes of the Imperial Navy or command the Orc Airwa and lead to the planetary plundering. You decide. Necromunda Underhive Wars was released in September of 2020. A tactical role-playing action game, much like the previously seen Mordheim, players take control of a gang and you level up your characters and fight opponents. Both PvE and PvP were available, but it was heavily criticised on the poor AI behaviour. An okay game, just not great. The Horus Heresy Betrayal at Kalth was released in 2020. Designed and published by Steel Wool Studios, it was a turn-based strategy based on Games Workshop's 2015 board game of the same name. To be honest, it was a little dull and a bit uninspiring. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister was released in 2020 and made and developed by Pixel Toys. This was a first-person shooter for the Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2. One of the first VR games we got for the Warhammer series and actually pretty good fun. Warhammer Underworlds Online, released in 2020, published and developed by Steel Sky Productions. A multiplayer turn-based tactics game for Windows was based upon the board game by Games Workshop. A near straight copy, this was a great way to learn the physical game without having to invest in models or invest the time in painting them. I highly recommend, although the PvE does get a little bit tedious, the PvP system is brilliant. Adeptus Titanicus Dominus was released in 2021 and published and designed by Membrane Studios, a turn-based tactics game for the PS4 and Microsoft Windows. You, the player, control some of the greatest weapons available to the Imperium of Man, the mighty titans of the Adeptus Titanicus. With both a solo and online multiplayer mode, 
and 18 missions to choose from, it wasn't bad, maybe just a little slow. Necromunda Hired Gun is a 2021 first-person shooter video game developed by Stereum on Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. Based on the Games Workshop's 1995 tabletop Necromunda, you, the player, play as a mercenary seeking to uncover a conspiracy involving a powerful gun in Necromunda's underworld. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector is a fast-paced turn-based strategy game developed by Black Lab Games and published by Slytherin Limited in 2021. With incredibly positive reviews, this was dubbed to be the most 40k game as it showed off all of those brand new Primaris models you can play in-game. One of the only downsides is you can only play as Blood Angels. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormground is a turn-based strategy game developed by Gasket Games and published by Focus Home Interaction in collaboration with Games Workshop. Released in 2021, it's kind of an underworld mix of that and Fine Liberation. You can play as the Maggot King, the Nighthaunt or Stormcast Eternals. The Age of Sigmar games are coming thick and fast with Tempest Fall, released in 2021, published and developed by Carbon Studios. Another VR game released out for the PC. This one was pretty nice. The graphics were a little bit better than Battle Sister, although pretty much the same concept, just, what, 60,000 years earlier. 2022 brought us Warhammer Total War 3. Like its predecessors, it was a turn-based strategy game with real-time tactics. Better graphics, new factions, and new missions. Get stuck in. Released in 2022, over 25 years after the original one, we were brought Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters by Frontier Foundry and Complex Games. This plays a little like XCOM, but with a nice flashback to the original games. You take charge of a squad of Grey Knights, killing a load of Chaos and Demons. It's a pretty good game and received generally favourable reviews. 2022 brought us Shooters Blood and Teeth by Rogue Side Games, a run and gun style 2D platform throwback I guess to kind of a 90s 80s game. This one's a bit of fun. If this is your kind of game I'm sure you'd like it personally, not my thing, but I can understand. You play as an orc, you kill a load of dudes, it's as simple as that. The very last game on our list. This is the most recent Warhammer game released and it is Warhammer 40,000 Darktide. A lot like Vermintide but set in the 40th millennium, you play one of four squad members killing a load of Chaos Demons. It's been excellent fun. I have to say I enjoyed this much more than Vermintide and can highly recommend. The missions are great, the graphics are brilliant and the gameplay is super fun. Also playing with some friends as part of a squad is the whole point of this Warhammer hobby anyway. And there we have it. That is the complete list of every single Games Workshop or Warhammer game released on any kind of console or system. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do like, share, subscribe and leave a comment below. Remember to hit the alarm bell for more videos to come. If you want to support the channel, there is a link down there to my physical shop. You can also join the Patreon or become a member on YouTube. Thank you to our video sponsors Raid Shadow Legends. The game is available now on both Android and iOS. So make sure to click on the link below or scan the QR code on screen right now to get all of those juicy bonuses.